Welcome to Cape Cod. Folks, Captain Mike here from Salty Cape. Today I am fishing in Stellwagen Bank, early April with Captain Rob Lowell and Jeff Fortin. We're having a lure versus bait debate. As you can imagine, you probably know what side of the fence I'm on. But we're fishing for haddock. Who knows what we'll bring up, which is really my favorite thing about bottom fishing. You just never know. And certainly a great way to kick off the season. Yeah. Oh. So I'm here with Captain Rob Lowell from Cape Cod Offshore Charters in, I'm gonna let Rob talk about what the playbook is for today. We're out here on a beautiful April day. It's early April. It's flat calm and we're haddock fishing. Uh, we're up here at Stellwagen Bank and we are using the Jig Beaky rig coupled with a sand eel jig, both by Hoagie. And the name of the game today is Fish Slow. So before we can get to fishing, we got to find the right water depth and uh, kind of the area that we want to be in. Uh, Stellwagen Bank's a pretty big place and the haddock can be a number of spots on it. So the general game plan is to get out there and cover ground until you find what you're looking to find. Whether that is looking for bait on the bottom with your sounder or just looking for the right kind of water depth uh, to dial them in. Right now we're fishing at about 130 feet of water, which was about the depth I was getting them last week in a different spot. So trying to mimic those same results that we had last week in a different spot. And so we're gonna hedge our bets today uh, between fishing just a traditional uh, jig with the beaky teasers. And then we're also gonna put some clams on some of the rigs. And what's great about this beaky rig is it also serves as a great high low rig. And if you lose your bait, you're still in the game with the teaser. And uh, sometimes they prefer, you know, with the bidet, sometimes without. And so we got our bases covered. And uh, I'm going to be doing a little twitch jigging. Um, you know, we know there's some cod in the area, so I want to be sensitive to minimizing foul hooks if, um, if they're particularly if they're smaller fish and we haven't hit our one fish per person limit. But, you know, we just want to be careful not to foul hook um, a species where we're trying to rebuild the stocks. the lure setup we have today um, six and a half inch sand eel jig I chose pink um, I found over the years that pink is a great uh, haddock color for whatever reason um, there's a lot of uh, little uh, redfish down here um, and you'll notice that um, the teaser style assist hook that comes on the sand eel jigs matches the teaser beaky hooks on our jig beaky rig which um, it's basically a high-low rig with a snap on it where you can attach a jig or even a sinker. A lot of folks will use the bait beaky rig like um, or hedging our bets today. Uh, they'll even put bait on it and fish it on the bottom of the bank sinker. Um, I find the teasers are enough without the bait but the beauty of using this rig with bait say is if you do lose your bait you're still in the game with a fish fish catching teaser but again I, I fish this rig baitless uh, just like this now, um, this rig can be fished fast or it can fit be fished slow. Today I'm fishing it slow and very close to the bottom. What I don't want to do is foul hook any unnecessary fish. Um, the, the haddock can get schooled pretty tight, but so can cod. And we're in Cape Cod Bay on Selwagon Bank. And so we're, uh, we have one fish per person. It's before April 15th, so uh, we can keep a, keep, a keep a couple of cod, but what we don't want to do is accidentally injure fish so uh, with foul hooking them and sometimes the schools can get quite dense so we're just fishing this very slow on the bottom all our fish are mouth caught no foul hooked fish and uh, just standing right down to the bottom and uh, what I do is twitch jig this sometimes I'll just drag it but oftentimes it's a twitch jig and we'll get into that in just a moment <laughs> 
So I sent my rake to the bottom. And what I don't want to do is foul hook a lot of short cod with a fast retrieve. So I'm going to do what's called the twitch, what we call it hoagie, the twitch jig retrieve. So I'm just twitching it. And you have those beaky teasers just quivering above the jig. I'm picturing my jig just sort of laying on the bottom or close to it. I'm just doing a little twitch up and down and make sure I'm tight on the bottom. I do not want a foul hook short cod. I want those cod to grow up and we want that fish stock to get back. So I'm just going to twitch jig just like this in the bottom. And most of the action comes from my hand on the rod butt here. <laughs> and uh, just twitching it. And once I want to lift it, make sure I'm back on the bottom. Lift it off a little bit, let it down. So the twitch jigging, just series of short little twitches, twitches. Then you get a twitch, twitch. There we go. There we go. So this guy feels a little bigger. Oh, nice. Oh, nice haddock. Wow. That's a big boy. We'll get him in. He's barely hooked. Get him in, get him in. Nice. Fish. Twitch jigging, working its magic again. Again, today all the fish are on the uh, on the teasers. So what's nice about the twitch jigging is you don't. The jig's not moving very far in the water column, so you don't foul hook a whole lot of fish. So this is a nice, healthy release of an almost legal cod, and off it goes. So basically what we're doing right now, we just had one fairly successful drift. We got about 10 or 12 haddock in the box from that drift. So gonna idle back up drift I'm using my chart plotter to see where my line was and looking around to see where the lobster gear is and the other boats make sure that I'm not gonna run into them and at the same time give them enough space to, to keep their guys on fish without waking them or anything like that so a lot of times when you're when you're ground fishing it is a lot about catching fish but it's a lot about etiquette you don't want to make anybody angry out here everybody's out in April just trying to you know get their boat commission and have a good time so and we're trying to get up without pissing everybody off and uh it's a I big think, area lots yeah. of structure so uh what i like about this style of fishing is everybody can have their own little patch of real estate absolutely yeah you never have to get too close to any other boat uh the haddock are pretty well spread out if you seem to find them in a small area you can basically you can basically drift that small area all by yourself basically all day I usually try to stick with a thousand or fifteen hundred foot drift at the most and keep them dialed in. That way every time you make a pass if you are using bait that bait kind of stays in the area and almost chums up the next fish. So you can see right here that that's obviously a nice pile of something. We're going to assume that that's bait. It could be small redfish or maybe an entire school of redfish but since we saw that and we are running up drift we have a pretty good idea of where the boat's gonna go. So we're just gonna get a little ahead of that. We're gonna do a small circle, get the boat positioned, then we're gonna drop lines right back down on top of that. And I can pretty much guarantee that we're gonna get some nice haddock or redfish out of that pile. Now there's not a whole lot to be said about the rigging for this setup. It's so the jig beaky rig comes standard with this, uh, like a dual lock snap on the bottom and a uh, you know, just a typical crane swivel on top. This is the Bibo size jig beaky rig. So it comes rigged to a 60 pound, like premium high seas um, mono. And uh, so I just tie directly to my leader. I have um, you know braid on my reel, a little top shot of uh, fluorocarbon. So I'll just tie it directly. This is like a sort of a hybrid outfit that I use for like for everything jigging or trolling or whatever uh, my my classic bait rod but um, i just clip the sand eel jig on the snap which comes with a crystal beaky teaser these crystal beaky teasers on the jig beaky rig match 
and just tie a simple clinch knot, a fisherman's knot, whatever knot, and I'm good to go. And uh, just as simple as tying on the leader, clipping on the jig, and sending it down to the bottom, hopefully not getting hooked while you do it, and you're in business. So you can see this rod, it's really nice and soft, which minimizes fish loss. Nice big haddock. Oh, it is a good haddock. So I'm loving my outfit today. Um, you'll notice that I have a shorter than usual stick for me. Uh, this is the Hoagie Hybrid Rod. This is a rod that I use for light tackle, inshore trolling, uh, either with lead core or um, there we a go. trolling sinker with a tube and worm. Uh, as you can see out here, haddock fishing. It's a very good vertical jigging rod with a conventional outfit. I have an Avid. JX series. Now this is a good reel uh, for ground fishing for the same reasons that, that it is for trolling. It has a 6 to 1 gear ratio and a larger spool so it you know you can get a bait up from bottom quickly if you want to like check for weeds or rebate or whatever. Uh, but this is a very light outfit, very easy to use. You'll notice that it has a very parabolic action. Very soft, very flexible. There's a little glass in the blank. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, long extended foregrip, so it's easy for vertical jigging. Today we're twitch jigging. It has a gimbal mount, um, so it also works well as a trolling rod. I'll use these for uh, school tuna, Alpha vineyard. Uh, not necessarily an East of Chatham giant rod, but a smaller school tuna rod. Um, light tackle, but very soft, very forgiving, very versatile. And... Um, so this reel, I have spooled with 60 pound test braid, and I have a long, I'll call it a 12 foot top shot of fluorocarbon. I don't know what I'm gonna use this outfit for. Sometimes I might just tie directly with a jig. So I always keep a 12 foot piece of fluorocarbon on it. In this case, I'm using the jig beaky rig, uh, so the floor is a little overkill, but I just always have it on the rod. This is a short rod, it fits inside consoles, fits inside the five and a half foot bed section of my pickup truck. So it's very easy to stow, very convenient outfit. And uh, I'd call it sort of a modern take on an old school boat rod, but it's perfect for fishing these six to 10 ounce jigs that we're using for Haddock out here on Stellwagen. Um, 60 pound braid is going to get down quick. Now this Avid's nice because it's got a nice oversized grip. It's easy to work with. High gear ratio. This is the uh, JX series so it's not as wide as the LX. And so what that's going to do is have less real body so it's going to make the outfit lighter to use. It's a single speed reel. I'll, use, I'll put a two-speed reel on this if I'm trolling for tuna or fishing for some bigger stuff, but this is a perfect size reel for just simple fishing like haddock fishing and a hip bottom. And here we go. You can see it's a nice soft rod, easy to use. I'm just going to twitch jig with it. But it's got just enough rod butt where I can get it under my arm and do the speed jigging with it but also enough butt where I can fight a fish and fit in a rod holder with enough space. So it's just a multi-purpose rod and so we, that's why we call it the Hoagie Hybrid Rod and today I'm using it for haddock fishing. Um, perhaps you've seen the video where we um, troll a tube and worm in Cape Cod Bay with this same outfit on braid for stripers using the trolling weight. So it's good for that. Um, I've used these south of the vineyard for school bluefin tuna but just a nice, happy, easy, light tackle boat rod. Whether it's, as Jeff just said, just off the bottom, or they're keyed in on small baits today, but I've caught maybe one or two fish on the jigs, but they all come in on the teasers. Um, I'm not using bait. Can't say I'm out fishing the bait, but I don't feel like I'm at a disadvantage either. I'm catching just as many fish making less of a mess, I will add. But here it is, just slow and twitchy on the bottom, and I'm not complaining. It's before April 15th, so we get one fish per person. 
We'll measure this guy, but I can tell just by looking at him, he's legal and certainly a haddock. And, well, I'm certainly pleased for the first film trip of 2022.